Time is short. Time is limited. Time waits for no one. So let us pray together right now. Oh Lord, here we are in your presence. Open our hearts to receive your living word. Give us a sensitivity to recognize your voice in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, people of God, I want you to turn with me to a psalm. A psalm of David, that is Psalm 39. I'm going to read from verses 4 to 5. And David says this, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. Some versions say that I may know how fleeting life is. Indeed, you have made my days as hand breaths, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor. Wow. <laughs> People of God, this is, a, this is a serious message. I will repeat that word again. David said, certainly every man at his best states is but vapor. <sighs> People of God, There is no amount of seeming security in this world today that can guarantee you tomorrow. There's no amount of, of health or wealth, position, or possessions, pleasures, or treasures at this moment that can guarantee you your next moment. King David here is telling us, he's saying, look, time is short. Time is limited. Time waits for no one. And we must recognize that each moment is a precious gift from God we must never take for granted. Never. It, it reminds me of something else in the Psalms, actually. I'll quickly turn there. This time from the prayer of Moses in Psalm 90, verse 12 says this, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Ooh. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, Apostle Paul also advised us about this in the book of Ephesians 5 verse 16 and Colossians 4 verse 5. He said, make the most of every opportunity. In other words, make the best use of your time because time is short. Now, in, in the lights of these psalms and the scriptures I've referred to, it should not surprise us that the devil takes delights in seeing us waste our time. That's, <laughs> that's what he enjoys. He likes to see us waste our time, waste our time on things that have, 
have no lasting value and significance. That's the devil's intention. That's the devil's plan. And I want to tell you something today, people of God. There is no easier way for the devil to waste your time than to deceive you down the path of unforgiveness. The dangerous, destructive path of unforgiveness. This is going to usher me to the title of today's message. Don't waste your time on unforgiveness. If, if you are at home with someone right now, I want you to turn to them and tell them. And tell them, say, don't waste time on unforgiveness. Just, just say it to the person next to you. If you are alone, you can say it to me. You can tell me right now. You can say, Brother Chris, don't waste time on unforgiveness. Forgiveness. Don't waste time on offense. Don't waste time, precious time, on bitterness, on resentment, on bad feelings towards others. Don't waste time on unforgiveness. This is the message I want to emphasize to you today. Because, look, let's face the reality, people of God. Let's talk. Let's talk to ourselves. Let's talk about the reality. We are living in an imperfect world filled with imperfect people, including you, including me, imperfect people, where it is simply impossible to avoid issues in relationships that tempt us to fight the wrong battles. I'll say it again, people of God. We're living in an imperfect world filled with imperfect people where it is simply impossible to avoid encountering issues in our relationships, oftentimes on a daily basis, where we are not tempted to fight the wrong battle. You know what I mean by wrong battle? <laughs> wrong battle, I mean fighting flesh and blood instead of leaving the issue for God. I mean being quick to, to cast blame and, and point fingers instead of first looking inward. Wrong battle. Praying against your enemies instead of praying against your weaknesses. Wrong battle. Many people today are wasting precious time paying so much attention attention to their senses, their feelings, their flesh, instead of their spirits, and thus easily falling into the trap of the devil to fight the wrong battle. And let me tell you, people of God, fighting a wrong battle shows your heart is not in the right place. Being unwilling to forgive shows you have forgotten just how fleeting your life is. You've forgotten, as James describes in James 4 verse 14, that this life is like a mist, a vapor that just, just appears, appears for a while, a short while, and then vanishes. You've forgotten that tomorrow is a mystery that only God alone can unravel. And it's easy to hear this type of message about the importance of forgiveness 
and internally justify your response and say, oh, Brother Chris, you don't, you don't know what this person did to me. You don't know what I'm facing. You don't know the extent of, of the hurts in my heart or what my husband has done to me or what my wife has done to me or my brother, my sister, or my business colleague, my friend. You don't know. But I would say to you this, people of God, harboring unforgiveness is not a reflection of the extent of wrong done to us. It's a reflection that you are in the wrong place in your relationship with God. Because as Christians, forgiveness is not a recommendation, it's a command. Forgiveness is not an option. Forgiveness is not just a good advice, it's an instruction in righteousness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It's a command, people of God. I want to give a word of advice, a word of advice to all of you today. In the light of this psalm that, that calls for self-examination, for sober reflection. Look, anytime you are wronged, anytime you are hurt, anytime someone offends you or cheats you or lies against you or falsely accuses you, in this world it can happen. Being in the right place with God does not mean you cannot be wronged. Anytime this happens, take a step back from the emotions of that moment. Take a step back and look at your life through the lens of eternity. What do I mean? Remember, we must live each day as if it were our last. In the same vein, we must live each day as if it were our neighbor's last day. Just, just reflect on that, people of God. That person you are harboring offense toward. Do you know if their journey in this life may end in the next moment? Do you want regrets and remorse to fill your heart because you missed the opportunity to settle an issue because you are wasting your time with offense and unforgiveness? Life is too short to waste time on bitterness that only leads to bondage. Life is too short to waste time on resentment that only leads to regrets. Life is too short to waste time on unforgiveness that only leads to unhappiness. People of God, life is too short. Don't waste time on unforgiveness. Look at your life through the lens of eternity. Eternity's perspective. (sighs) You would realize that unforgiveness is actually torturing yourself with your wrong masquerading as your right. Unforgiveness is damaging yourself, inflicting pain on yourself, hurting yourself with your wrong, disguised as your right. I repeat it once again. Being in the right place with God does not mean you cannot be wronged. You cannot be 
lied against. You cannot be falsely accused. You cannot be a victim of, of mistreatment or injustice in this world. But if you are in the right place with God, you will not give any ground to the devil by fighting the wrong battle. <laughs> yes. You will not permit your hearts to give in to issues that, that breed division and, 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 and cause strife. No. You will not compare what is temporal with what is eternal. Remember the case of Joseph <laughs> in the Bible. We know what his brothers did to him. We know. But look at Joseph's response. You know, Joseph said, he said to his brothers, you meant evil to me, but God meant it unto good. He was able to forgive his brothers, to maintain a, a free heart, a clean heart, a pure heart, because he recognized the position of God as paramount. You meant evil to me, but God meant it unto good. So who am I to hold offense? Who am I to hold unforgiveness? Who am I if God meant it unto good? People of God, if we can realign our focus back to our relationship with God, <laughs> to love Him above all, put Him first in our hearts, if we can realign our focus back to our relationship with God, as a consequence, we would be quick to resolve issues in our relationships with others. Why? Because we don't want to permit anything in this world to affect our relationship with God. And we recognize that God can use anything, even foolish things in this world, to accomplish His purpose in our lives. So, <laughs> as I bring this short message to a conclusion, people of God, stop wasting time on unforgiveness. This life life is too short it's too short to waste time on bitterness and resentment and bad feelings towards others I know that the devil is knocking on the door of your hearts to try and enter or for many of us he has already entered through this issue of unforgiveness through what someone has said to you what someone has done to you and I know I'm not denying that it's painful but I'm simply reminding you today as Christians, forgiveness is not a recommendation. It's not an advice. It's a command. It's an instruction. We must forgive. We must let go. Don't let anything stand between you and God. Don't let anything be a barrier between you and what he has destined you to receive today. <laughs>